Hello and welcome to State of the Union. I'm Stefan Grobe in Brussels. The European elections are over and the horse trading over future alliances, coalitions and top positions has begun. In meetings, meetings and more meetings, the winners and losers of the verdict of the voters started to get themselves ready for the next five years of legislative battles. I'll come back to that in a minute. But first, it was a week of intense diplomatic activity for Ukraine. President Volodymyr Zelensky traveled to the country's recovery conference in Berlin, the G7 summit in Italy and a global peace summit in Switzerland. He appealed for short-term help in repairing Ukraine's electricity network, long-term investment in its energy system, and he renewed his calls for more help in repelling missile attacks by Russia. Thanking German lawmakers at the Bundestag for their continuing support, a defiant Zelensky made clear what he thinks about compromise with Moscow, and that is next to nothing. Russia must І через прибирання руїн за собою повинна заплатити за всю шкоду, яка була завдана цією агресією і нашій країні, і нашим людям. Він був вичерпаний рівно тоді, коли Путін почав спалювати наші міста Європою цю ходу з неваги до життя і нації. On a European level, support for Ukraine seems to be assured as the European elections ushered in the same majority of centrist parties. At the same time, voters also strengthened the far right, as expected, especially in France. Marine Le Pen's National Rally Party scored spectacular gains and moved closer to the gates of power in Paris. This political earthquake let President Emmanuel Macron call for snap elections in just a few weeks. Some observers believe this to be a high-stake gamble. But Macron called upon moderate forces to unite against extremes on the right and on the left. Je suis convaincu que des sociodémocrates, des radicaux, des écologistes, des démocrates chrétiens, des gaullistes et plus largement que beaucoup de nos compatriotes et de responsables politiques qui ne se reconnaissent pas dans la fièvre extrémiste peuvent travailler avec ces dirigeants et bâtir un projet nouveau. Let's discuss this week's events now with Jacob Kierkegaard, senior fellow at the German Marshall Fund and the Peterson Institute for International Economics. Welcome to the program. My pleasure. Glad to be here. So the center held in the European elections and their parties keep a solid majority. What can we expect now? Will it be business as usual? I think it will be quite close to business as usual, actually. Uh, I think, for instance, that the uh, process of selecting the next leadership team, I mean, the presidencies of, of the commission, council, high representative, etc., I think that will go quite quickly. Uh, clearly uh, led by the reappointment, in my opinion, of Ursula von der Leyen as president of the commission, uh, buoyed by the fact that uh, the EPP did well, uh, the CDU did well in Germany, so while you wouldn't say that she has a strong democratic mandate behind her, but she nonetheless has better than any alternative candidate. Let's assume that you're right and that Parliament will re-elect Ursula von der Leyen as Commission President. Will she try to reach out to the far right and what impact will that have on her political agenda? No, I don't think that will be her first strategy. Uh, she, she still has a majority uh, based on the liberals, centre-right, centre-left. On top of that, uh, we should remember that the Green Party were among those that suffered significant losses in this election. What that means is that uh, the Greens, who clearly uh, will be fearful that the Ursula von der Leyen in a new term uh, will, will water down uh, aspects of the Green Deal, well, they need to seek influence more than they did before because they are fewer in numbers. Uh, so if she needs to reach out, uh, well, uh, I would say the Greens uh, would be a much better opportunity because it wouldn't really cost her very much, in my opinion, uh, in terms of support from within her own party and others. The real shocker, of course, was Emmanuel Macron calling for snap elections in just a few weeks. What do you expect is going to happen there? Well, I mean, yes, the irony here is that uh, the European election seems to have caused more waves at, at some national levels, first and foremost, of course, France. 
Um, no, I mean, I think uh, we're now in a period of acute uncertainty uh, uh, for France. Uh, the French parliamentary election system is a two-round system uh, that makes it very difficult to predict. Uh, it puts a premium on these uh, party coalition agreements, uh, and we're seeing those uh, being struck and then unstruck. Uh, we saw the Republicans, or at least the leader of the Republicans, Eric Cotty, trying to gang up with, with uh, Le Pen. We saw similar moves for a new Front Populaire on the left, uh, except that the winner of the, 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 the left-wing vote-getter in the European election, uh, Glucksmann, said, without me. So it's very, very unclear what will happen. All right, Jacob Kierkegaard, Senior Fellow at the German Marshall Fund. Thanks for sharing your views with us today. My pleasure. One of the worrying features of politics recently has been physical violence against politicians. But in France, the authorities are also worried about violent incidents during the Paris Olympics that will start in six weeks. That's why special police units organized the drill together with colleagues from Spain. Mock assailants staged an attack where they took hostages and barricaded up. Police units activated protocols for handling such incidents during the surprise exercise aimed at enhancing response capabilities using dogs, robots and special security groups. In the end, the hostage takers were overwhelmed and forcefully arrested. The message coming from the drill, don't mess with the police and with the French-Spanish cooperation. That's it for this edition. I'm Stefan Grobe. Thank you for watching. Have an excellent week.